Okay, boys and girls, let's take our seats and quiet down. Sunday school is about to begin. Again, I'm going to take something that uh, I believe more people should uh, should hear more regularly, and it's from the Blue Equinox, and I'm going to uh, hopefully uh, read at least half of it to you uh, today. It's uh, Liber CL, which is Roman numerals for 150, and 150 uh, is the numeration of four Lamids, or four L's. So it's Liber 150 vel legi libellum, as my flawless Latin would uh, render it, or the, the law of liberty. And we hear a lot, we heard that, hear that word a lot, whether we uh, uh, hear it with uh, understanding ears or it is spoken with an understanding tongue. But anyway, it's Liber 150 Vel uh, Nun Oyen Lamed. The three Hebrew letters like that. Nun Oyen Lamed in Hebrew is, is read from uh, right to left. But if you spell that uh, from right to uh, or left to right, it spells lawn. Lamadoyan Nun. So I immediately uh, uh, took that as some kind of a sign. But the subtitle is A Sandal. Uh, the Law of Liberty, L L L L L, in uh, five parts the preface, the law, one of liberty, two of love three of life, and four of light. So, if you're comfortable, grab your coffee, wrap your, your cozy blanket around you, snuggle in, and listen to Lieber 150, AA publication in Class E. Preface The Law Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. In righteousness of heart, come hither and listen. For it is I, To Megatherion, who gave this law unto every one that holdeth himself holy. It is I, not another, that willeth your whole freedom and the arising within you of full knowledge and power. Behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Even as the sun standeth eternal in the heavens, equal at midnight and at noon, he riseth not, he setteth not. It is but the shadow of the earth which concealeth him, or clouds upon her face. Let me then declare unto you this mystery of the law, as it has been made known unto me in diverse places upon the mountains and in the deserts, but also in great cities, which thing I speak for your comfort and good courage. And so be it unto all of you. Know first, that from the law spring four rays or emanations, so that if the law be the center of your own being, they must needs fill you with their secret goodness. And these four are light, life, love, and liberty. By light shall ye look upon yourselves, and behold all things that are in truth one thing only. 
whose name hath been called No Thing, for a cause which later shall be declared unto you. But the substance of light is life, since without existence and energy it were not. But life, therefore, excuse me, by life, therefore, are you made yourselves, eternal and incorruptible, flaming forth as suns, self-created and self-supported, each soul center of the universe. Now as by light ye behold, by love ye feel. There is an ecstasy of pure knowledge and another of pure love. And this love is the force that uniteth things diverse for contemplation in light of their oneness. Know that the universe is not at rest, but in extreme motion whose sum is rest. And this understanding that stability is change and change is stability, that being is becoming and becoming is being, is the key to the golden palace of this law. Lastly, by liberty is the power to direct your course according to your will. For the extent of the universe is without bounds, and ye are free to make your pleasure as ye will, seeing that the diversity of being is so infinite also. For this also is the joy of the law that no two stars are alike, and yet must understand also that this multiplicity is itself unity, and without it, unity could not be. And this is an hard saying against reason. Ye shall comprehend when rising above reason, <laughs> which is but a manipulation of the mind, ye come to pure knowledge by direct perception of the truth. Know also that these four emanations of the law flame forth upon all paths. Ye shall use them not only in these highways of the universe whereof I have written, but in every byway of your daily life. Love is the law. Love under will. Part one of liberty. It is of liberty that I would first write unto you, for except ye be free to act, ye cannot act. Yet all four gifts of the law must in some degree be exercised, seeing that these four are one. But for the aspirant that cometh unto the master, the first need is of freedom. The great bond of all bonds is ignorance. How shall a man be free to act if he know not his own purpose? You must therefore first of all discover which star of all the stars you are, your relation to the other stars about you and your relation to and identify identity with the whole. In our holy books are given sundry means of making this discovery, and each must make for himself attaining absolute conviction by direct experience, not merely reasoning and calculating what is possible. And to each will come the knowledge of his finite will, whereby one is a poet, one a prophet, one worker in steel, another in jade but also to each be the knowledge of his infinite will, his destiny to perform the great work, the realization of his true self. Of this will, let me speak clearly unto all, since it pertaineth to all. Understand now that in yourselves is a certain 
discontent. Analyze well its nature. At the end is in every case one conclusion. The ill springs from the belief in two things, the self and the not-self. And the conflict between them. This is also a restriction of the will. He who is sick is in conflict with his own body. He who is poor is at odds with society, and so for the rest. Ultimately, therefore, the problem is how to destroy this perception of duality to attain the apprehension of unity. Now then, let us suppose that you have come to the Master and he has declared to you the way of this attainment. What hindereth you? Alas, there is yet much freedom afar off. Understand clearly this, that if you are sure of your will and sure of your means, then any thoughts or actions which are contrary to those means are contrary also to that will. If therefore the Master should enjoin upon you a vow of holy obedience, compliance is not a surrender of will, but a fulfillment of it. For see what hindereth you. It is either from without, or from within, or both. It may be easy for the strong-minded seeker to put his heel upon public opinion, or to tear from his heart the objects with he, which he loves, in a sense. But there will always remain in him many discordant affections, as also the bond of habit, and these also must he conquer. In our holiest book it is written, Thou hast no right but to do thy will. Do that, and no other shall say nay. Write it also in your heart and in your brain, for this is the key to the whole matter. Here nature herself be your preacher. For in every phenomenon of force and motion doth she proclaim aloud this truth. Even so, in so small a matter as driving a nail into a plank, hear this same sermon. Your nail must be hard, smooth, fine-pointed, or it will not move swiftly in the direction will. Imagine then a nail of tinder wood with 20 points. It, it is verily no longer a nail. Yet nigh all mankind are like unto this. They wish a dozen different careers and a force which might have been sufficient to attain eminence in one is wasted on the others. They are null. Here then, let me make open confession and say thus, though I pledged myself almost in boyhood to the great work, though to my aid came the most puissant forces in the whole universe to hold me to it, though habit itself now constraineth me in the right direction, yet I have not fulfilled my will. I turn aside daily from the appointed task. I waver, I falter, I lag. Let this then be of great comfort to you all, that if I be so imperfect, and for very shame I have not emphasized that imperfection, if I, if I, the chosen one, still fail, then how easy for yourselves to surpass me. Or should you only equal me, then even so how great attainment should be yours. Be of good cheer, therefore, 
since both my failure and my success are arguments of courage for yourself. Search yourselves cunningly, I pray you, analyzing your inmost thoughts. At first you shall discard all those gross, obvious hindrances to your will, idleness, foolishness, friendships, waste employments or enjoyments. I will not enumerate the conspirators against the welfare of your state. Next, find the minimum of daily time which is in good suit necessary for your natural life. The rest you shall devote to the true means of your attainment. And even these necessary hours for you shall consecrate to the great work, saying consciously always while these tasks that you perform them only in order to preserve your body and mind or health for the right application to that sublime and single object. It shall not be very long before you come to understand that such a life is the true liberty. You will feel distractions from your will as being what they are. They will no longer appear pleasant and attractive, but as bonds, as shames. When you have attained this point, know that you have passed the middle gate of this path, for you will have unified your will. Even thus, were a man sitting in a theater where the play wearies him, he would welcome every distraction and find amusement in every accident. But if he were intent upon the play, every such incident would annoy him. His attitude to these, then, is an indication of his attitude toward the play itself. At first, the habit of attention is hard to acquire. Persevere, and you'll have spasms of revulsion periodically. Reason itself will attack you, saying, How can so strict a bondage be a path to freedom? Persevere. You have never yet known liberty. When the temptations are overcome, the voice of reason silenced, then your soul bound forward unhampered upon its chosen course, and for the first time you experience the extreme delight of being master of yourself, and therefore of the universe. When this is fully attained, when you sit securely in the saddle, then you may enjoy also all those distractions which first pleased you and then angered you. Now they will do neither anymore, for they are your slaves and toys. Until you've reached this point, you are not wholly free. You must kill out desire and kill out fear. The end of all is the power to live accordingly to your own nature without danger that one part may develop to the detriment of the whole or concern lest that danger should arise. The sot drinks and is drunken. The coward drinks not and shivers. The wise man, brave and free, drinks and gives glory to the Most High God. This then is the law of liberty. You possess all liberty in your own right, but you must buttress right with might. You must win freedom for yourself in many a war. Woe unto the children who sleep in the freedom that their forefathers won for them. 
There is no law beyond do what thou wilt. But it's only the greatest of the race who have the strength and courage to obey it. O man, behold thyself, what pains wast thou fashioned? What ages have gone into thy shaping? The history of the planet is woven into the very substance of thy brain. Was all this for naught? Is there no purpose in these? No purpose in thee? Wast thou made thus that thou shouldst eat and breed and die? Think it not so. Thou dost incorporate so many elements that thou art the fruit of so many aeons of labor. Thou art fashioned thus as thou art and not otherwise for some colossal end. Nerve thyself to seek it and do it. Naught can satisfy thee but the fulfillment of thy transcendent will that is hidden within thee. For this, then, up to arms. Win thy own freedom for thyself. Strike hard. And that's where we'll end Sunday School today. Tomorrow we'll read of love. As you can see, I'm upstairs uh, this morning and it's raining. It's a rainy day. I didn't even get to the coffee shop this morning, but that's okay. We'll, we'll work something out. Anyway, Sunday school's dismissed. Continue to be good to yourself. And be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.